not in a nostalgic way, but you're dealing with the larger theme of longing and loss. I suppose you can read into it uh, some sort of, you know, almost call it some sort of symbolism. Uh, you can read it into your own, your own, uh, your own symbols, uh, whether they're public symbolism or private symbolism that uh, each of us have and what you uh, carry to it. Each of you will bring your own source of reference when you look at a painting of mine. I don't particularly see them as sad, though. I, I, um, I feel I, if I've done my best, I've done a pretty good job. But now, yes, you might say, well, the colors are not overly bright and joyous. Uh, that may be, in some ex to some extent, the nature of the egg temper medium. It's not a, a bright, garish. Uh, uh, if you're looking for a Kodachrome in there, you're not going to see it. Uh, they're almost more tonal than anything else. And that, I think, comes out of drawing. And uh, uh, it, uh, how, if it strikes people as, as I say, a little bit uh, uh, on the negative or say it or something, uh, it certainly wasn't meant that way, and it's not planned that way, I guess. Tom, you're an artist, and you're a writer, and you're a father, but you're also a curator. You were a curator at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. I'm going to go off topic here and talk about another art gallery on this podium. You were there when the paintings at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery were arrived. Were they gifts or were they loans? <laughs> I don't know if we've got time to tell you a funny little story about the time Beaverbrook hired me in 1959 to work for the Art Gallery, but I'll go through it quickly. Uh, he, um, he literally uh, uh, asked me to wait in the kitchen without any food while he went in and had his lunch, and uh, then he went and had his afternoon nap, and I was still waiting. And he came out around 3 o'clock, and I was ready to faint, and he said, looked at, glowered at me, and Forrest, I said, what are you standing around here for? He said, you've got the job, get to work. So that was 19, uh, fall of 59, and of course, perhaps some of you have heard about the, uh, the rigmarole over a hundred million dollars, and I did get embroiled in that. And uh, Beaverbrook, when he hired me, he said, your job will be to look after the permanent collection. That were his very words. And I, that was the, more or less the gist of my, as, as a witness for the gallery. They look after the permanent collection. Well, permanent, I mean, it's a gift to the, um, People. And of course, why else would he build that magnificent art gallery in Frederick? And it wasn't to leave something there for.